well it's Thursday and you all know what that means so today we have MLW Fusion we got a couple of interesting matches of course we have Sam Adonis once again taking on his nemesis the awesome Microman this war between them has been going back and forth so we're gonna see what's gonna take place and of course moving on with Impact Wrestling's 1000 episode man it's been so long I remember first time I watched TNA I was so impressed by what they were doing, you know, and then of course over time things have changed, but it's great. But we don't know who exactly we're going to see showing up. I think many of us are going to be excited. Hopefully, we're going to see who we're going to see. And then finally, we have Ring of Honor. We're going to see some interesting matches as well to take place. But to cap everything off, we have some news updates to tell what's been going on in the world of pro wrestling, such as what events the promotions are throwing out. Who's booked, what matches are set, any injured wrestlers, any wrestlers who are departing or signing, the whole enchilada. So, let's get ready for another episode of the Leaded Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to the Lead It Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, Bears Promotions, Wrestlers Matches and Championships. I am your host, Jay Rod here. So, if you are new to the channel, welcome. This is a channel where we throw in a lot of reviews on the world of pro wrestling from various promotions all over the world. So, if you like what you see, Please subscribe to us. We'll be throwing daily uh, reviews from various promotions that you may or you may not know, that you may like or may not like, or however you feel like it. Also, if you like this episode, please give us a like on the click button and, of course, a nice little comment in the bottom below. So, let's get started with our very first review, and this is from MLW, or as known as Major League Wrestling with Fusion. Now, it opened up with TJ Crawford taking on Ichiban. If you guys don't know what Ichiban means, it means number one. So that's what it means in Japanese. So um, I'm trying to remember if I ever heard the name TJ Crawford anywhere. Um, I'm I'm totally throwing out a blank, but I can tell you the map was pretty good. Ichiban did pick up a really good map um, win when he applied to Ichiban time, and it was over just like that. However, in the post-match, when TJ Crawford was walking out into the ramp, something interesting has taken place. A hooded figure shows up, whispered something into TJ Crawford. Now, we don't know what is that all about, but we'll see what how this things will progress in the future for this one. Now, in the backstage, we see a second gear crew, Matthew Justice, Manders, and of course, Mance, we're giving a little motivation peps talk to Microman, who is their new friend. Now, as you know, um, Microman has been um, deceived by none other than his former manager and his opposer uh, friend, St. Laurent, who was trying to take control of him. However, uh, Second Cure Crew has always had their back. So this is a fight between him and Sam Adonis. Sam Adonis, who's saying he is the much bigger attraction in Mexico than Microman. But we'll see how that that's going to be our main event. But speaking of Sam Adonis, he even says had an interview with um, Sam Laterna uh, saying the same old things that saying that, you know, he is the main attraction and all this other stuff that he's going to give get rid of the, the uh, rid the world of Microman once and for all. Now, at, before our next match, which is a women's featherweight match, we have Love Dog making his way to the commentary section now. Love Dog is a, a fan, and he's very much in love with Becca. But uh, Becca doesn't seem like she's interested because right now her she is trying to win the MLW Women's Featherweight title from, um, what's her name, 
Dexy El, El, um, Delmi Exo, who's out for a while due to the injury thanks to Becca, but she faced against Tiara James. But you can guess that this match did ended with Becca, and of course, uh, doing the 450. But Becca once again ignores Love Dog. You know, I think many people are trying to tell him, forget about her. You know, so that sort of thing. Now, Sam Lachuna decided to sp say a little hi to um, Serena De La Renta as she tried to assure her that she is not Alicia and she's not Canadian. However, the obvious question does tell is, we ask ourselves what happened. We did see her, she did say it. We saw her name down in Mexico, like in some sort of jail cell. So basically, we just wanted to hear what she had to say. So according to Celine De La Renta, she's saying that, you know, that she was such a fool for making a deal with a moron, which, of course, is Cesar Duran. Now, we haven't seen what happened to Cesar Duran. Of course, she did address that what ha look what happened to uh, Johnny, um, Johnny Mundo and, of course, Tail Valkyrie, that sort of thing. But it appears that now she is here with the vengeance. So we'll see where that's going to go. Now, another interview conducted by, of course, Sam. She talks to Jacob Fatu. Now, Jacob Fatu is excited that he's going to have his match against Minoru Suzuki. So this is not like, you know, a dream match or anything for him. This is like, this is a match I want. So he kind of explained that a little bit. But however... As you know, I mentioned Selena De La Renta. She comes back saying that she hasn't forgotten the last time they confronted each other. So this is, she said that it, she that it's time for him to for her to collect her receipts. So we don't know what's going to take place after that, but we'll see. Now, our next our main event features uh, Sam Adonis taking on Microman. Uh, of course, there was a moment that Snitsky was about to punt. Microman, but luckily the second gear crew showed up to give a helping hand, taking care of it. And then, of course, uh, uh, Microman did a, a body splash onto Sandanes. One, two, three, it was over. However, as soon as that match was over, a small press conference was conducted by our current MLW World Heavyweight Champion, Alex Kane, who's saying who's next. However, St. Laurent, who is now currently working as a manager, for Davy Boy Smith Jr., uh, of course, Kane is not going to tolerate that someone like him because, as you know, that he called them that guys like him who are born British don't do, don't come out, nothing big comes out of. It. But I wouldn't be surprised. But as soon as this press conference is over, we will jump into the final moments of the show, where of course the calling and the second girl crew were at brawl with each other. But out of nowhere, Jimmy Lloyd shows up to help the second gear crew. So it's kind of interesting how this war has progressed. Uh, so we can't wait to see how this is going to turn out. So we'll see what happens next week. But for now, let's move on with Impact Wrestling. Okay, Impact Wrestling. Wow, 1,000 episodes. Can you believe it? I mean, I don't think many people... If you would say almost 20 years ago, you would have said TNA would not have continued on until they switched their name, would go on this far. Probably people thought it was going to fail. I mean, look, it kind of almost would have fallen apart, but they stuck in there. But I have to say Impact Wrestling has thrown in some interesting talent over the years. I'm not going to lie about that. I and mean, of course, some people thought, you know, oh, they're like a ripoff of WCW that sort of thing. But I always said that TNA had a different flavor into their brand. That's something that I've always been very honest about. But seeing them going to 1000, well, that's a good thing. Now, uh, it opened up with, with, of course, the the president of the company, Scott Demore, who's been with the promotion since day one, probably thought the same thing. And of course, talked about the one biggest attraction that they have is the knockouts. Uh, we often say that the women's division in Impact Wrestling is far more better than WWE and possibly AEW. And of course, here comes the first ever and TNA um, Impact Hall of Fame. Gail Kim talking all of this and that, doing a little thing, congratulating, thanking people. Then here comes some people from the past. We're talking about the beautiful people, Angelina Love and Velvet Sky. 
So basically there's that. And then of course here comes Giselle Shaw to rain on everybody's parade to take the spotlight saying if it weren't for the beautiful people, people like Giselle Shaw would not have existed. And then of course here comes Jordan Grace saying about the generational f women's wrestling of her time. You know, like Tara, Gail Kim, and a few others. And then, of course, here comes Diana Perrazzo. You know, that sort of thing goes around. And then Trinity. Then here comes Awesome Kong and all this other stuff. And then here comes Tasha Steeles, who calls herself the greatest knockouts um, champion. But uh, someone had a little different, and that is, of course, Hardcore Country. That's right, Mickey James is back, who no one's seen in six months. So basically, there's that, and then, of course, she proposes. How about Mickey James teams up with Trinity, Awesome Kong, Jordan Grace, and Gail Kim to take on Giselle Shaw, Diana Perrazzo, um... Tasha Steeles and of course the beautiful people and I thought that's interesting so she's calling this the greatest knockouts match in, ever so basically that's how it's gonna be that's gonna take place next week so I can't wait to see that now speaking of people from the past we see Eric Young interacting with one of the uh, Impact's greatest tag teams that we know of all time back in their history we're talking about the America's Most Wanted um, James Storm, and of course, uh, the Wildcat, Chris Harris, they are interacting, and here comes Santino Morella admitting himself that he's a fan of the America's Most Wanted, but all of a sudden, the glass broke, and it turns out to be Shark Boy. I did not anticipate seeing Shark Boy being there, but Santino had an idea. Now, as you know, I wouldn't be surprised that this happens in the future, but I'm going to say it. He actually decided to deputize Shark Boy as Deputy Director of Authority. So it's a DDOA. And he gladly accepted the job. I wouldn't be surprised if that scumbag uh, Dirty Dangle gets pissed off because Dirty Dangle lumped himself to be de a Deputy Director without Santino saying a thing about it. So that kind of sets it in right there. But we'll see. But for, but in the meantime, I can't wait to see what Shark Boy is going to do. Now, we have a feast or fired type of match. Now, if you guys are unfamiliarized with feast or fired, we'll, I'll tell you what it is. The feast or fired is basically a match where you have to get a couple of uh, get uh, for suitcase down from a tower that they stepped up. Now, there's four uh, certain things inside the suitcase. Only one suitcase. In the other hand, it says. You're fired, so basically you're done. Now the feast is basically opportunities that you want to get. So that is something that will be challenging. Now there's a lot of talent that were involved, but I can tell you who was the first one to grab. Uh, Chris Bay was the first one to grab his case, but here's the rules. Once you grab the case, you must be on the floor outside the ring in order to get it. So he was the first one to get it. Then after that, we have... Um, Crazy Steve. Basically, what happened is I love this one. Crazy Steve grabbed his suitcase. Suitcase. He stabbed Brian Myers in the abdomen, and then he looks at Moose. He's like, "Go ahead." So Moose was knowing, "Don't mess with the crazy." So basically, he just let him be. And then, of course, the next person to grab the case. Well, there was a bit of a hot potato going around uh, between um, what's his name. Joe Hendry and Yo -Ya, Yuya Umura. So Yuya Umura picked up the suitcase. And so basically there's that. But however. Steve Macklin as you know. Who's determined to get his Impact Wrestling World title back. He almost could have grabbed the suitcase. Walked away with it. If it wasn't for being gored by Rhino. He tosses the, the suitcase. And it was caught by a moose. So I thought that was a classic thing. I'm like wow. That is fantastic. Even though Moose is scumbag, but that moment was great. I'm sure Macklin was not happy the fact that someone rained on his parade. So, that's going to be fun. Now, 
our next interview we have is Chris Sabin. As you know, he will be in the main event to take on Leo Rush for the X Division title. So, he did admit that he is one of the best wrestlers, but his arrogance, no, not so much. But we'll see what happens until then. Now, all of a sudden, we saw the return of the Desi Hit Squad, consistent of Rohit Raju and Champagne Singh. Uh, apparently they got into the face of some familiar tag team of history and we're talking about Team 3D and I can tell you how this ends. Devon, go get the tables and I'm sorry, it did, it did, it did end it with of course um, with, the th with the 3D on to Sing and then of course Team 3D won to pick up the match. But however, you cannot end the match with in things with out putting someone through the table well that was Rohit Raju who ended up on the table so that's how it ends the history with that now while he's on his way to the ring Josh Alexander bumps into the rascals being obnoxious leaving a huge mess in the walkway but however he'll deal with them later now Josh Alexander even went into the ring admitted himself that he is an impact wrestling fan he remember watching it and not to mention that he does have some unfinished business. And that unfinished business is to regain a title that he never lost. But of course, Alex Shelley would take notice of that one way or the other. But however, the Rascals attack both people. But of course, Alex Shelley made the choice to leave him beaten by the Rascals. But because of the Rascals' antics, uh, the deputy director of authority uh, decided, you know, since you like to beat up people, how about you? So he put Trey Miguel in the match next week against Josh Alexander. And then later he was confront. Then Santino Morello was like, hmm, I'm impressed. Then, of course, Kenny King decides to complain about the way he lost. And Victory Road, the digital media title. So he told him that he was going to be in a ring against Eric uh, Young. And then, of course, Sharkboy did tell uh, Santino if there's any possibility he can get a badge just like his. So I'm sure he probably will get one. Now, our next match is a mixed tag team match. We have Eddie Edwards and Alicia Edwards taking on Tracy Brooks and Franken Kazera. Now, this whole mess has been going on far too long. As you know, Eddie Edwards considered himself as a locker room leader, and he believes that Frank Kazarian is a disgrace to Killer Kowalski. But however, it was Eddie, um, it was Frank Kazarian that ran on the parade on Alicia Edwards and Victory Road. So they decided to settle things, or what? Hopefully, if that's the case. But in the end, it was of course um, Tracy Brooks with the fate to block onto Alicia Edwards to pick up a win. Now that does not end there. During a post-match um, promo, uh, Kazarian uh, told people to take a look at the screen. And it was revealed that, of course, Tracy Brooks is now inducted into the Impact Hall of F Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame, and of course, uh, she just couldn't believe it that she's now in. I mean, look, Tracy Brooks may not brought a big impact into into, um, but she did open the door for people to say, "I want to fight for the women's division in Impact," and I think that played a good role for her. If she was the first to enter and that's how the door entered from there so she was happy and of course not only um frankie her husband is there so was their son rebel who was there too and of course everybody were chanting you deserved it now our main event is the impact x division champion i have to say this is going to be crazy you know very intensified I mean, Chris Sabian, nine-time X Division champion. Leo Rush, one of the best uh, junior heavyweights, X Division, however you want to call it, in, in the world. But, however, you probably can guess that they tried their finishers to end it. I mean, the cradle shock, final hour, didn't work. But it took one more cradle shock by Chris Sabian to take out Leo Rush and finally become 10-time X Division champion. So that is the longest record. So I like to see who is man enough to break the record. So that's going to be great to see. So I think that's pretty much it right now. What we have with Impact. Let's move on with Ring of Honor.
Okay, Ring of Honor. Now, it opened up with a Ring of Honor World Championship match, which was very unusual, but it's not uncommon. Claudio puts his title on the line against Rocky Romero. I think this was a very interesting matchup. I mean, people probably would have assumed if Rocky won, he not only will have the CMLL middleweight, middle welterweight champion or whatever he has, along with the Ring of Honor title. But however, we all know Claudio, what a tough SOB he can be. And of course, he applied the European uppercut to finish off Rocky once and for all and retained his title. Now, our next match, we have a very interesting tag match. Now, we have Kevin Koo teaming up with the Outrunners. Now, this was a very interesting pairing. I mean, Kevin Koo, I've seen what he does. But teaming with the Outrunners, that's a little interesting. But, however, this team has worked up. This next team they're facing is a team that has worked very well the last time. We're talking about the Infantry and Willie Mack. I have to say this is a good team to enjoy because um, they seem like they can get along great. I mean, I wouldn't say if Willie should join the infantry. I mean, he never served in the military. But they should form like a somewhat of a group together that, you know, serves like something else. But nonetheless, their, their cohesive has been very impressive. It was the combination of the stunner and boot camp onto um, Kevin Koo that picked up the win. I have to say... I like to see more of the infantry and Willie Mack together. Now, an interesting pay, um, um, interesting uh, interview by Lexi Near with Ethan Page, who is feeling like he lost himself in a little bit. Now he wants to get into the spirit of competition, and he be feels what better way to do that in Ring of Honor? And I think it is exactly what he needs. He needs that type of thing. So I know that he hasn't been seeing in AEW that much, but maybe this will help him to build up that I need to build up the, the spirit of competition but he did pick up but he will have a match later on we'll get to that our next match we have is Mercedes Martinez taking on uh, Zoe uh, Lynn well I can tell you this match ended with Mercedes Martinez with um, the Brass City Sleeper just like that it just over Next up, we got the Gates of Agony taking on Matt Brannigan and Cold Raderick. Uh, I think this is Cold Raderick's in, in debut on Ring of Honor, but you can tell by this match this was over when the Gates of Agony picked up the win when they pinned both men, both Raderick and Bra uh, Brannigan. Now, our next interview we have with Lexi is Billy Starks. As you know, a little strange has been going on with, of course, the Minion herself. Billy Starks. It looks like things are not uh, are kind of a little rocky with her and um and Athena, but we'll see how that progresses. Now, our next match we have is Christopher Daniels taking on Darius Martin. Now it's good to see Darius having a singles match. We've been mostly been rarely seeing him in tag team. Uh, we haven't seen him with his brother yet, but hopefully he does return soon. But he, he normally been recently been teaming with Action and Dreddy, which was pretty good. Good. However, we rarely see him in in singles competition. But see him in, see him in there. It was great. But not to mention he's facing against a guy who's been well recognized in Ring of Honor. We're talking about the Fallen Angel, Christopher Daniels. But normally you would have assumed that uh, Darius would have picked up a win with his usual moves. But however, uh, he pulled it off with a roll up. Which is a move that, you know, is very unpredictable to pick up. But it worked. Now, our next match we have is Lee Johnson versus Shane Taylor. I thought it was a pretty good match. But the one thing that was interesting is... All of a sudden, we see Lee Moriarty showing up. Helping Taylor out. But we just don't know why. But Taylor was able to pick up the win with... Um, with a body splash on onto Lee Johnson, and then of course, right when they leave, it's Taylor and Moriarty shake hands. So later on, we did see those two in an interview with Lexi. It turns out they're they're trying to build something together. So we'll see how that rolls up. I wouldn't be surprised if Lee Moriarty joins the um, Shane Taylor promotions. 
Next up, we got Lady Frost taking on Willie, uh, Willow Nightingale, of course. That would have been fun. I mean, they probably would have said if they saw Lady Frost, man, this whole thing is freezing. But here comes Willow Nightingale, who turns up the heat. So I would say it. But it was a pretty good match, I have to say. Willow Nightingale and, um, and Lady Frost. But it was Willow with Dr. Bob that finished off uh, Fro Lady Frost. And it was over right from there. Now, our next match, we have Josh Woods taking on, um, who was it? Dominic Greeny. I have to say, this is another good competition. When, I mean, Dominic Greeny does have a background in submission. It would have been something that, of course, Woods would need. But, unfortunately, uh, it was the Anarchy Suplex that put away Greeny, allowing Woods to pick up the win. Now, our next match, we have Griff Garrison taking on Ethan Page. Now, the obvious thing we did see is Maria and Cole Carter out in the ring. But I have to say, Ethan Page getting on the spirit of the competition really kicked in. He did a, he, um, he did pick up a good one against him when he applied a slingshot cutter and boom. that that's how, um, That's pretty good right there. But later on, we did see Griff Garrison in the back. Uh, Maria and Cole said they could that he definitely need, need to have friends. So as you know, we all know what happened to his tag partner. He's no longer in the company, so we'll see where it's going to go from there. Next up, we got the Work Horsemen taking on the boys. Don't get me wrong, the boys are a very strong, capable group. But however, it was the Work Horsemen with their cohesiveness and, of course, blue collar style of fighting that picked up the win when they applied a stomp on one of the boys. One, two, three. Henry picked up the win. Now our main event, we have Tony Nese taking on AR Fox. Man, that was a pretty good match. I think it was very impressive. I mean, nothing significant, but it was AR Fox with a, sp a springboard uh, flatliner that put away Nice. I'm sure Nice did not expect that, but it did. So I have to say Ring of Honor is doing pretty good right now. So I think that's pretty much it with Ring of Honor. I believe it's time with some news updates. Okay, so welcome to our news update. So this is what we have for now. Now, I know many of you may have already heard this already. Uh, Jade Cargill made her return to AEW recently and attacked uh, Chris Satlander. But however, a new, FIFO Select reports that Jade Cargill's return is for her to finish up with AEW. And now there's, there's, they're saying that it's po the, the possibility that she'll be WWE bound. I'm sure many WWE fans will be happy with that. Uh, but uh, still no indication why. I know that many people question this about AEW. Like why they never had um, Jade Cargill versus Britt Baker. That would have been a good match. But according to what we were told, they were trying to separate them. It would have been more about ego in some capacity. But... Nonetheless, but if you guys knew about Jade Cargill, she did was part of the Performance Center, but never had the opportunity to get into NXT or anything yet. I'm sure WWE will love to have her around, and I'm sure they're going to put her in, in NXT in no time once that she signed. But we'll see how this goes. Her, uh, her um, I'm not sure exactly when she'll be leaving. Now, speaking of Fightful Select, they also report that Heath... Um, his Impact Wrestling contract is expired in November. Now, as far as they know, uh, no agreements have been made between both sides, between both Heath and the company. So we don't know, but I'm sure many WWE fans who know Heath very well, they probably would like to see him back. Uh, there's no telling if that's what WWE wants or if that's what Heath definitely wants himself. But we'll see where we go from there. Now, um, recently, as you know, there's been some absence going on with Tokyo Yoshi Pro Wrestling. Uh, they just recently announced, but this was translated by Mr. Haku, uh, saying that her um, Urano Neko uh, is, how to say, is currently now sidelined due to a torn ACL and a leisure, um, measure um, Messicia's injury on her left leg. So basically, she's 
will be out for a while, but she is scheduled for surgery next month. Uh, hopefully, she does have a speedy recovery and returns back to Tokyo Shoe Pro Wrestling. Now, um, wrestlers coming from here in the States calling the little thing called Baka Gaijin Invades Japan. There's nothing compared like Baka Gaijin and Friends. The, the, um, basically, they're invading uh, Big Japan Pro Wrestling, which is one of Japanese wrestling's um, promotions that involves death matches. Uh, they announced Necro Butcher. Jasmine Sinclair, uh, Remington Rowe, and Akira, and Madman Panda will be making their presence known in the promotion uh, this weekend, I believe, uh, between the, seven, the eight, 17th and 18th of September. Now, New Japan Pro Wrestling has announced for their London show, R Royal Quest 3, on October 13th. Bushi will be present there, so I'm excited for that. Now, um... I found an interesting thing that go, uh, goes around, and I'm, I'm sure we're going to see poss a possible rivalry between these two or go back and forth between these two in in stardom. There was an interview conducted by Ami, um, Ami Sodi. Uh, they she, she was asked, who does she consider as a soulmate in, um, in, a soulmate in wrestling? Well, she did mention one person in particularly. Uh, let me pull it up real quick. I know I saw it here. Right, here it is. Uh, she did say that uh, I think that Waka Sukiyama would be the closest that I have to a soulmate in wrestling. She has something that I don't have. She's the one that introduced me to professional wrestling. So I think no matter what, we'll always have a strong connection to each other. So we could see like one of those possible back and forth rivalries, battles between each other. But it's great to see. However, that doesn't end there, what we have. Um, as you know, I may have reported this um, on the Unagi Sayaka watch where Unagi um, was injured. Uh, apparently, she had to be pulled out from the recent show with um, All Japan due to the fact she was supposed to be in there. But Saki, a friend of hers from Colors, uh, was asked if she can step in, and of course she did. Uh, she put out some interesting comments talking about Sunny about this she defeated Sunny if you guys are wondering I haven't seen the show yet but I'll see it myself I thought it would be a big deal because you were teasing that you could beat me get Una evaluation but you were no match for me anyway please train again Suwama-san so basically it seems Saki was thought that you know Sunny underestimated her because you know Oh, she's not facing Unagi, she's facing someone else. As you know, Saki has uh, possibly almost over 10 years of experience that uh, that fits her. But she also tells her trainer, Suwama, uh, got to retrain her again. So, I mean, I'm sure, if you guys remember, Saki and Unagi did uh, challenge uh, Chi-Chi and Zones from, from Evolution. Sunny's also part of that group. So, yeah. Uh, but Sunny, I will be talking more about Unagi on the next Unagi Sayaka Watch. Apparently, there's more updates. So I'll keep that separate at the time being. I think that's pretty much it for now. So let's just call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode. Coming up, we do have, of course, um, AEW Rampage and NXT Level Up. So we'll see who levels up in this show. Uh, I haven't decided yet what I will be doing before that. But we'll see how that goes. But right now, stand by for the next uh, Unagi Sayaka watch. Apparently, there's more information about her. Uh, even so, we'll see what happens until then. But for now, I will see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang.